Today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Trek The Next Generation electronic Starship Enterprise from Playmates Toys, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. As I said today, we're taking a look at the Star Trek The Next Generation Starship Enterprise from Playmates Toys. I got this at Primary Colors Retro Relics in Lincoln, Illinois for 35 bucks. Hell of a price. Uh, considering all of them on eBay and all that and Amazon go for over a hundred bucks. Before, before we take a look at the box, we're gonna take a look at something that comes with it. Uh, it comes in this little bag here. Go ahead and aim it down a little bit, there we go. Um, I have put this together already. Uh, it's not much, only two attachments. The, the nacelles need attached. Um, I have not yet because you do have to attach stickers. I have not put the stickers on there because this is so old. Uh, the stickers don't really come apart anymore. You pretty much have to cut them apart. I don't want to do that. I don't know if they'll even stick anymore. Not sure. Uh, but as you can see, 1992 Playmates Toys, number 6102. So there's that. I'm not going to put these on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep them just like this uh, so it won't be a screen accurate enterprise but oh well <clears throat> something else this comes with is this right here tells you uh, Starfleet or Star Trek the Next Generation Starfleet USS Enterprise uh, it shows you what each one is. You got the main bridge there, the saucer module, main shuttle bay, uh, impulse engines, main impulse engine, the warp engine nacelles, uh, the battery section is here, and aft phasers. You have the ventral phase, phaser array, deflector array, docking port, captain's yacht, main deflector dish, tractor beam emitter the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D is a galaxy class starship and was completed in the year 2363 holding a complement of 900 crew members with a maximum load of 800 passengers the galaxy class starship is the largest in the known galaxy equipped with type X phasers the Starship Enterprise is capable of firing a beam of 5.1 megawatts at any target within a 360 degree field of fire. The deflector shield configuration for the USS Enterprise provides protection from natural hazards as well as attack from unfriendly forces. Very nice. I'm going to have to get a frame for this and frame it. Um, very cool. Really like that. Uh, something else it came with was directions. Obviously. Shows you where to attach the labels, the stickers, uh, and how to put in the batteries. Uh, this hat did have batteries in it. The original batteries, because it was unopened. Uh, luckily, the batteries did not leak out or anything, so. Very cool. Let's go ahead and put those back in the bag, and we'll take a look at the box. All right, so on the box here, let's raise this up just a smidgen. As you can see, there's the Star Trek Next Generation logo, Star Trek in or Starship Enterprise. Press here to activate Enterprise. Uh, that's not exactly where you press because I have taken it out of the box already and put it together. It's just sitting in the box because I don't have anywhere to shelve it right now. Uh, dual light-up engines, four authentic Starship sounds, warp drive, impulse power, phasers, and photon, photon torpedoes. 
highly detailed 15 inch replica of the Starship Enterprise. Bonus technical blueprint included. Actual sounds from the Star Trek TV show. This is collector's edition number 083750. And it takes three replaceable AA batteries, which are included, or at least were included, until I took them out. Alright, so here's the top of the box the Galaxy class flagship of the United Federation of Planets. List of everything included there. Uh, Playmates and Paramount. Same thing on the sides. Here's the back. And as you can see, everything is well labeled on the back as well. Uh, you have the 10 forward lounge, saucer module, reaction control thruster, upper sensor platform, main bridge, lifeboat station, captain's yacht, forward photon torpedo launcher, Light up buzzard hydrogen collector, photon exhaust, navigational reflector, and long range sensor array, docking port, reaction control thruster, battle section, lateral sensor array, warp field grill, light up warp engines in the cell, saucer impulse engine, linear phaser array. You have the impulse engine activation button. Warp drive activation button, phaser activation button, and the photon torpedo activation button. Press the phaser or photon torpedo buttons to activate weapon system sounds. Press the warp drive or impulse engine buttons to activate warp impulse sounds and light up engines. Collect all the Starfleet accessories for the ultimate space adventure. You have a personal communicator, official Starfleet communication device, stock number 6152, shuttlecraft Goodard, official Starfleet transport craft, stock number 6101, and a phaser, official Starfleet defensive weapon, stock number 6151. And then over here we'll zoom in on. Log on, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701D, Enterprise History, First Federation Starfleet, First Federation Starship, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701, Constitution Class, Second Federation Starship, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701A, Constitution Class, Third Federation Starship, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701B, Excelsior Class, Fourth Federation Starship, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701C Ambassador Class. Currently, USS Enterprise NCC 1701D Galaxy Class. Built by the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards, Mars, Commission 2363, Current Commander Captain Jean Luc Picard. The current USS Enterprise is a Galaxy Class Starship powered by impulse and warp drive engines. It is the hallmark of spaceship systems design. The USS Enterprise is the most powerful and advanced starship the Federation ever built. Sorry guys, my eyes are starting to blur a little bit. Equipped with the latest warp drive technology, the USS Enterprise can reach the top speed equal to 1,909 times the speed of light. The cruise velocity of the Starship Enterprise averages warp factor 6 with a crew complement of 1,012 which includes families and children. The USS Enterprise ranks as the internal volume is, is reserved for future expansion and mission specific functions. The structure of the ship's hulls are supported by energy fields which tighten and flex as necessary. The USS Enterprise is protected by deflector shields capable of withstanding blasts from enemy vessels. 
an array of phasers and photon torpedoes makes the Enterprise battle ready. If evacuation of the Starship Enterprise becomes necessary, the saucer module is capable of atmospheric entry and terrain touchdown. Further access denied. Log off. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open her up. Take a look at the Starship Enterprise. Alright, and here she is, guys. The Starship Enterprise NCC-1701D. Uh, when you take her out of the box, the warp nacelles are not connected. You do have to connect those. And I have found, with this one, the right nacelle pops off quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if that's due to age or manufacturing error or what. Uh, but see it... doesn't like to stay on there. Uh, something they really should have done with this one was include a stand for the saucer section. Because as you can see it's very front heavy. You can't just stand it on a shelf or sit it on a shelf. It really needs a clear stand for it. I would even go so far as to maybe put a stand right about here because it balances fine from the very end of the saucer section. Very nice, very good detail. I'm not gonna go over the sounds right now because I have to get new AA batteries for it. Uh, however, I will come back to that uh, and add it on to this video once I get AA, three AA batteries for it. But the details are very nice. Um, it's got that Aztec pattern to it. It's very good. Uh, here's where the batteries go, right here, and that just slides off, as you can see there. You can tell where the stickers are supposed to go, but like I said, I'm not going to cut the stickers off because I don't know if they're gonna, actually going to stick or not. Uh, I really wish Playmates would have included a stand with this because, you know, chances are many of us fans... As kids, we would have probably just torn these up if we would have tossed them aside or just let them sit like that or whatever in a toy box. They wouldn't have lasted very long. Uh, however, they had the prime opportunity of not only having it as a playable toy, but as a display piece as well, if they would have included a stand. Very nice. Got the uh, len clear lenses on here. You can tell where the lights are. Yeah, see? That's how they connect, just like that. Uh, something I also wish Playmates would have done that I showed you Hot Wheels did very nicely with their uh, scaled Enterprise NCC-1701D is saucer separation. I believe Playmates did that with a later version of the Enterprise. However, this one, there is no saucer separation. Uh, in fact, let me show you real quick what I'm referring to. All right, there's the Hot Wheels NCC-1701D. I really wish Playmates would have maybe incorporated a, a larger stand like that. Um, that would have been nice. Um, could have set it on a shelf or something that way. Uh, and of course, here's all the accurate spots where the stickers would go if I put the stickers on but as you can see here the saucer separates on this one it does not separate on the Playmates Toys version which is mildly disappointing but it is what it is and for the price very very nice I really like this I've been wanting it for quite a while. I just got to find a way to display it. Uh, not only a shelf space, but a stand or something for it. If you guys got any tips, maybe let me know how you displayed yours. And let me know in the comments below, guys. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this video. Now I'm going to cut 
Uh, and we'll come back once I have the batteries for it and uh, I'll go through the sounds and all that.